I came into the drone delivery world from an unlikely background. I come from a family of bridge builders and teachers, and this background gave me a unique perspective on this industry. As you can probably tell, I come from a land down under. <laughs> In fact, my great-grandfather helped build the iconic Sydney Harbour Bridge, which you can see here nearing completion. My father is a landscaper who taught me the value of hands-on hard work and to have a go, no matter the challenge. My mother is a teacher, and I remember growing up in our family home, she had a hand-painted quote hanging on the wall, which read, a hundred years from now, it will not matter if I was rich or poor, the kind of house I lived in or the clothes I wore, but the world may be much different because I was important in the life of a child. Looking back now, I can see how this background inspired me to pioneer an industry. When I was studying in China, studying, <laughs> I came across the first drones that went on sale. I was so captivated by this new technology that I had to make a decision between all of the clothes and belongings that I'd accumulated on exchange or these drones. So I threw out everything that I owned, I packed my drones into my suitcase, and I headed to the airport. At the time, when most people looked at the early drone technology, they thought of the military. But as a student of philosophy, I look at the world and see how it is and how it ought to be. And as an entrepreneur, I seek to build bridges between the two. So when I looked at the early drone technology, it reminded me of a long line of technologies that have come from the military into our everyday lives. From the ARPANET into the internet that connects us all, from missiles into rockets that enable us to explore the universe. I saw the potential for drone delivery technology to benefit our society. So, I founded Flirty, the first drone delivery service in the world, with the mission to save lives and change lifestyles. However, there were many challenges that would lie ahead. The technology was at its infancy. Society didn't yet know about the benefits of this technology, and the regulations had yet to be written. We knew that to make our mission a reality, we had to make safety a priority. So we brought together a team of engineers working hand in hand with a team of pilots. To build the level of reliability that we needed, we had to build our technology from the ground up. So we literally manufacture our delivery drones in our offices in America. We discovered that the safest way to deliver a package by drone was not to land in your backyard, but to hover and lower the package out of the air and into your hands. It's been said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, and we set out to make every delivery experience awesome. We brought this technology and we partnered with NASA. We beat some of the largest companies in America to get the first government approval to conduct a drone delivery on US soil. This was our Kitty Hawk moment. We delivered prescription medication to a healthcare clinic in Wise, Virginia. We proved that this technology could be used to deliver medicine to people who needed it urgently. This drone that you see behind me then landed in the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. It's going on display alongside the Wright Brothers Wright Flyer, which flew at Kitty Hawk. We worked with Johns Hopkins to prove that this technology could help in response to hurricanes, to deliver medicine when roads and bridges are down. Around the world, we worked with New Zealand Land Search and Rescue to prove that this technology could help stranded hikers. And in America, 
we conducted the first delivery of over-the-counter medicine, food and drinks from a store to customer homes. We proved that this technology is safe, that it helps people in need, and that it can secure approval from regulators. We then set out to identify the application of this technology that would have the greatest impact on society. We met with paramedics, we met with ambulance services, and we learned that sudden cardiac arrest is the number one cause of natural death in America. Unfortunately, this is personal for many of us because there's a one in three chance that any one of us or one of our close loved ones will suffer from a cardiac arrest at some point in their lives. Cardiac arrest is an electrical problem that causes the heart to stop beating. It's different to a heart attack, which is a plumbing problem like a clogged artery. When someone suffers a cardiac arrest, CPR can be performed to keep the blood flowing, but CPR alone doesn't restart the heart. What the heart needs is an electric shock, and this life-saving jolt of electricity can be delivered by an invention called a defibrillator. Now, the good news is that anyone can use a defibrillator, because when you unbox it and apply the pads, it decides for you whether to administer an electric shock. All that you need to do is click a button. The challenge with defibrillators is that for every one minute that passes after someone suffers a cardiac arrest, their likelihood of death increases by 10%. They're more likely to die at a rate of 10% per minute until a defibrillator is applied. So, I'd like you to visualize that you're at home eating dinner with your family and a loved one suffers a cardiac arrest and they fall to the floor. You call for an ambulance. That ambulance sets out, but it needs to navigate through traffic. It needs to slow down to get through red lights. And it needs to weave around pedestrians. Let us dare to imagine that the moment that ambulance set out, a delivery drone carrying a defibrillator also took flight. That delivery drone flew straight as an arrow, over traffic, over red lights, over pedestrians, and to your home, where it hovered and it lowered that defibrillator out of the air and into your hands, and enabled you to apply that defibrillator and save your loved one's life, well before the ambulance could even arrive. We're making this dream a reality. We brought this technology to Remsa, a pioneering ambulance service, and we formed a partnership for the first defibrillator drone delivery service in America. When someone calls 911, in addition to sending an ambulance, we will be able to send a delivery drone carrying a defibrillator to give them every chance of survival. Now, you're probably wondering why this service isn't already available to everyone, including you. And that's a good question, because the technology is here. Paramedics and ambulance services are keen to use it. The next major step is for us to work with regulators to open the skies. I'd like to see every company in the drone space follow our model by putting a defibrillator in every drone delivery location around the world. Sir Arthur Clarke said that every revolutionary idea goes through three phases of reaction. First, people say it's impossible. Second, people say it's too hard to do. Third, people say they said it was a great idea all along. <laughs> it is self-evident that drone delivery is a good idea. Just one defibrillator drone 
operating regularly in Silicon Valley will save a life a day. Around the world, over the decades to come, our technology will save over a million lives. We're building a future. We're seeing a, an ambulance drone in the air is as common as seeing an ambulance on the road today. Beyond defibrillators, drones can also save lives in natural disasters. A recent story resonated with me. After a powerful hurricane, a family was trapped on the roof of their home and in desperate need of fresh water. Imagine a future where a delivery drone flies in and saves their life. Imagine when someone has an allergic reaction to food and a delivery drone brings in an EpiPen with precision. Imagine a single parent with a sick child in the middle of the night when a delivery drone brings medicine to the comfort of their home. Imagine a world where there are no barriers to having anything, anytime, anywhere delivered to you by drone. That's the future I'm building. Thank you.